I'm glad I finally read it. I know what it's about now. I know what the deal is. What's his racist ass name? Well, hello. Welcome back to my channel. Trishana here to talk about some friggin' books that I have read or DNF'd recently. My hair is blowing all around my face because I have my fan on high. So that's fun. All right, jumping right into the first one is a DNF. This is Saint Death's Daughter by C.S.E. Cooney. I bought this a while back at a used bookstore. It's so pretty. I've seen it. I was interested in it. Sounded really freaking cool. It's fantasy. It's like historical. We have Lainey Stone's Daughter of Crown Appointed Killers. She has a gift of necromancy and a literal allergy to violence. So she's raised in isolation, but then her parents are murdered and her crazy ass sister um, must settle their extensive debts. Blah, blah, blah. Hunted by her enemies, terrorized by family ghosts, tortured by forbidden love for a childhood friend. Yada, yada. The goddess of death is on her side, though. Sounded really cool. I started it. How far did I get? I don't remember. 18%. Yeah, I stopped 18% in. I just, I wasn't hating anything. This is definitely a DNF situation of just like, eh, I don't know. I wasn't hating anything. I wasn't loving anything. I did, the pacing was kind of posing a problem for me. It seemed like we were taking forever, like whole chapters for like one scene and just dragging everything out a lot. And I was like, dude, this thing is huge. Like, is this why it's so huge? It kind of seems like it. Like, maybe it didn't need to be 600 some pages long if we could have just edited down a little bit. Um, just wasn't to my taste. So I quit and someone else can enjoy it. Gonna be unhauling. Then I picked up Cloud of Sparrows by Takashi Matsuoka. This I found or had on my list, my series TBR. And one of those rounds I did for um, duologies, I did like the try a chapter to kind of see if there was anything I could take off the list. And I really liked the try a chapter I did for this one. And I gave it like a high priority of like the favorite one from that like round I did. Uh, so I got it from the library, I'm pretty sure. However, I DNF'd at 31%. Initially, I was really liking it. It definitely gives Shogun vibes. I really like that TV show. Haven't read the book, but uh, it was giving me that energy and there was some like political scheming going on that I was getting intrigued by. I was fascinated with, but it was also pretty slow paced for my taste. And also there's a religious element, which again, there wasn't Shogun as well, like missionaries and stuff. But there's one character that was a missionary that we were following and he was like gross and icky. That like pervy religious, like, f what's his name? Uh, Fro Frollo or whatever from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Like the guy that has all this lust in his heart, but is like, dirty women. Oh, I'm so lusty. I just want to bang her. But God says no. Like, just like creepy, pervy ugh, vibes a bit. But then there's a woman who's with him. And once we got into her perspective, the like distaste for the religious crap just ramped up. And I think that's kind of what like, I was already like, okay, I am I, I am liking parts of it, but it's kind of slow getting, we're 30% in almost and like, what's going on? And then that happened, her chapters happened where we were in her POV and like seeing her backstory. And I know it's like of the time people were like that crazy, but like, you know, someone being sexually assaulted and being just, it being the norm to victim blame because, well, you're a woman and you have a body that men want. And so how dare you exist in the world? Like, ugh, ugh. And I just was like, yeah, not enough here to make me want to continue. So I gave up. Then after reading The Blood Dimmed Tide uh, by Stephen Arian and loving that and really loving, I, I like the book in general, but there's an element of it. These people called the Kozen, Kozan, who are near immortal, they, they're like living hundreds and hundreds of years and they're getting involved in like global politics kind of, like kind of scheming and moving people around but like subtly without anyone knowing that they're like manipulating. And it just gave, that particularly gave me vibes of The Old Guard, which I had never read, uh, but I had seen the movie, but I rectified that. And from the library, I got book one and book two 
and I really, really enjoyed them. Probably will purchase these at some point, I think, because they're just, it's so fun. I just love, I love this concept. In this, it's different. They are like more strictly immortal. The Kozan in that series, they, it's like due to their ability to magically alter time and their like experience with time, that's why they live longer. And in this, they are just like, they heal. They almost cannot be killed. At a certain point, their bodies do give out and they stop healing but it's like hundreds or thousands of years after living life and like they could get shot in the face and heal and be fine. So it's different from the Kozen, but like it gave me that same energy and yeah, I just, I love, I love this, this world so much. I gave both of these 4.5 stars. Just so fun, so fun. We have a queer relationship in here too, which is lovely. Their, their love just in general, whether they were queer or not is like, it's just like, I love it so much. Then I finally picked up the fourth and final book in the Diviners series, The King of Crows by Libba Bray. This one, all right. I loved the first two books in this series. I think I gave both of them 4.5 stars. And then the third book I gave, I think 3.75. This one, spoiler alert, I ended up giving three stars. I didn't love it. I'm not gonna lie, around the 60 to 70% mark, I started skim reading a fair amount. Not to the point of like barely reading it like I have done in the past, like with Mistborn uh, book three, where I'm like, yeah, I hardly fucking read the last 20% and I had to go look at a synopsis. Not the case here. And there were times where I would know like, okay, I just skim read and like something seems confusing. So let me go back a little bit and like reread. But I was not reading it as carefully or closely because I just wasn't as engaged with it anymore. I had just like lost my engagement with it. This conclusion just felt a little bit like irregularly paced in my opinion. And then towards the very end, too helter skelter and like full of plot conveniences, just plot armor and plot conveniences and stuff that didn't really make too much sense where I was like, wait, huh? I like where I'm told something like as the reader, I have information presented to me that if this happens, this is going to be the consequence. I'm like, okay. And then the thing would happen and the consequence would be either completely different or like slightly different where I'm like, wait, but I thought if that happened, this would happen, but it didn't or kind of didn't like, but why? And like not really enough of an explanation in my opinion. And there were things that happened in the plot that would have impacted me so much more like emotionally if I still cared to the same degree that I cared in like the first or second book. And I was already feeling that too in the third book. In the third book, there's like an emotional gut punch that happens that I kind of was like, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever. And that's what happened here too. I didn't love most of this book, the large majority of it, it felt like, and I think it was, it was like all these characters, they got separated and they were all going to the same place, right? They all had to get to the same location. And like most of the book was them just slowly getting there, all on these like side quests taking their fucking sweet time or due to circumstances it taking a long time to get there and like we were following them along every like tedious step of the way and I didn't like that for a fourth final book in a series I felt like that was like weird pacing to throw that in there and do it in that way I don't know it's just I didn't love it I still enjoy this series overall I still like the characters overall but honestly, I don't know if this is one I'm gonna keep because I don't know if I see myself rereading it. I might unhaul this series, I'm not sure. So yeah, kind of a wah wah. Not total disappointment, but a little bit. And then another DNF, and this one was unsurprising. <laughs> Probably to anyone who, I think I had mentioned that I was currently reading it. And I got the, like I, I heard about this book from Angela at Literature Science Alliance and she commented and was like, I'm surprised you're reading that. I predicted DNF and at the time, and even when I DNF'd it, I was enjoying it. Like there were elements of this that I was really liking, but it's sci-fi set in a future earth. So I think space travel is kind of a thing. At least going to the moon was clearly a thing. I don't know how much other space travel is a thing in this world, but it's like four, five or so hundred years in the future. Earth looks incredibly different. Our cultures look incredibly different. Just everything about human existence and like civilization looks pretty dang different. Conceptually, it's like very, I don't know, intellectual, very conceptual, I guess I would say. And I really liked the themes and I like, it was fascinating, like the world and how things were different, 
was fascinating, but also kind of just confusing to me. <laughs> and for a little while, I was like, I'm confused, but like, I don't care and I'm having a fun time. And I, it's okay to be confused, I think, and I'm just gonna go along with it. But I think that the writing style is what ultimately like did me in. If the writing style was more notable and I still was like a little confused, but like, I was just really engaged with the writing and the storytelling, I would have continued, I think. But the, the writing style and like the way the story was being told was not pulling me in enough. There was like this big mystery about something that got stolen and potentially leaked, this like list. And when I quit at 29%, I was still like, I don't really understand why this, what this fucking list is or why it's important. And yeah, again, I think if the writing style had been able to like pull me in more, I wouldn't have minded being a little confused because things were getting revealed like slowly. We were just getting like little nuggets of like, oh, okay, now that makes sense. But yeah, ultimately it was just taking me too long. And even if I ended up finishing it and feeling kind of positively about it, it just wasn't gonna be a fun experience to get there for me. So I did give up. Again, I kind of went into that one being like, eh, we'll see. <laughs> and then just the other day, I picked up and read The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Lavelle. This is clearly a novella. And it says that it is a thought provoking read that will captivate fans of dark atmospheric fiction who are drawn to explorations of racism, cosmic horror, and the complexities of the human experience, particularly those who appreciate a blend of historical and fantastical elements. So yeah, horror, historical, uh, very much inspired by, what's his racist ass name? The fucking guy, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, Victor Lavelle at the beginning put for H.P. Lovecraft with all my conflicted feelings. And it's an H.P. Lovecraft story, I think, kind of like reworked, uh, or at least like themes and, I don't know how to pronounce it. Ch Chitulu, Ch Cthulhu, the, whatever the fuck. Lovecraftian monster. And I didn't like, hate this by any means at all. I ended up giving this one 3.5 stars. I am not familiar with Lovecraft's works at all. I've never read any Lovecraft. I know he was racist and I think probably other, I think he was like anti-Semitic too, wasn't he? Uh, I don't know if he was like sexist, homophobic. I have no idea. I know he was racist. Um, and I can appreciate a black author in modern times kind of taking one of his stories or taking inspiration from Lovecraftian elements and reworking it uh, and reframing it like this and talking about racism, having that as a theme in the book. I can certainly appreciate that. I think that was well done, I would assume, and seemed like. Um, and I think I personally would have enjoyed this more, like just on a personal level, would have had a better time with it if we had seen more of the fantastical elements. And I think it's just the nature of novellas and me as a reader not vibing with novellas always. Um, it, it seemed a little half-baked to me to change perspectives like we did towards the end and interrupt Black Tom's perspective that we had going um, just when he became Black Tom. It kind of felt rushed in the end, I suppose. So I liked it. Again, 3.5 stars, but not something that like I'm ever going to reread or anything and I'm going to unhaul. But glad I read it. I appreciate that I read it. And then, where is it? I don't, what, is it right here? Yes. My little bind up I have of Dracula, Frankenstein, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I did read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Did not realize it was so short. That's why I started with that one. It was like 75 pages, I think. Spoiler alert, I felt kind of meh about this one as well. <laughs> I'm not a big classics reader. I have read classics and I, you know, I love The Great Gatsby and Wuthering Heights. I've read Pride and Prejudice a couple times. I've read other classics here and there, but I'm just not like, a big classics girly. And I'm not, again, not a big lover of novellas. I tend to most of the time feel like wanting and feel like, okay, well, you kind of didn't show me enough here. And that's kind of how I felt here. This one was just like, eh, okay. Well, I'm glad I finally read it. I know what it's about now. I know what the deal is. Uh, and I like, I see the merit in it and I see why it is a classic, but like, I'm never gonna reread Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Most of the actual action, like people doing things in this story is told to us, not shown. It's mostly telling and hardly any showing. And I have no idea, you know, I never read it for any of my literature classes to kind of get more critical analysis about it. I don't know. I'm not educated enough on the literary devices used here. Um, to know if why it felt that way, 
But either way, it just wasn't really to my taste as a reader necessarily. So three stars. And there we have it. That is the books I recently read slash DNF'd. It's about half and half. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of these and if so, what your thoughts were or if you are interested in reading any of them. As always, thank you so much for your time. Hope you all have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.